Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, let's get to it. Uh, just some technical errors. Everything is fine. Hopefully, you guys read the rules. Please make sure to follow them. That is very important. Uh, we will be working with these rules uh, very strictly, so there are no exceptions. If you break the rules, you will face the consequences. Thank you very much for hearing me out. Let's start the lesson. So, um, yeah, today our topic is holidays. And I chose some very interesting videos for you guys, which I will be posting into the group chat um, as homework for today. Yeah, holidays. So let's get to it. Here is the vocabulary for today. As I said, I'm going to be explaining some of the vocabulary for, I think, around 10 something minutes. Uh, we'll see how many words we get through. I think maybe around 10 to 15. So yeah. Um, yeah. Holidays. Uh, the first word is all in package or package holiday. And I would say that package holiday is the more common of these terms. Uh, personally, I know for a fact that I have said package holiday before. So yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry. Yeah, I know that I've said package holiday before. So yeah. Um, let me use it in a sentence. And then we are going to be doing the pronunciation shadowing practice after all of the vocabulary after our time is finished with that. So all in package, package holiday. Um, I recently purchased a package holiday to Dubai with my family because I didn't want to buy everything by itself. So it's like, instead of buying individually, you buy everything at once. Next is breathtaking view. And in general, you can actually use the word breathtaking for a lot of different things. It's a very good word. Breathtaking means it takes away your breath. Like you cannot breathe. It's like, <gasps> like that. And, uh, you can use this to talk about some natural thing that is very beautiful. Next is check-in desk. Uh, charter flight. We're gonna we're gonna move away from that. We don't think we need that. Uh, check-in desk. So check-in desk is a place where, for example, in a hotel or an airport. In general, it's any place where you give your documents. You say who you are, and then you say, "Okay, now I'm here." Especially, for example, hotels and and airports. These are the places where you can check in, um, and you can also check out. So there's also a checkout desk. So yeah, check in and check out are are kind of synonyms. Yeah. Let's move on. Departure lounge. Uh, departure is the opposite of arrival, and it means departure lounge is basically the place where you're waiting until your flight leaves. Um, it's like a little, like, like like a mini hotel, I guess you could say. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Departure lounge is our next word. Let me use it in a sentence. On my flight from China to Beijing. What? On my flight from China to Japan this week, I spent 15 hours in the departure lounge because my flights were very far apart. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Next one is far off destination. In general, you can actually use far off for a lot of different things. Far off means not close. It is an antonym of the word close. It is a pretty high level word. I don't think it's academic, but it's it's quite, um, it, it's a native speaker term. It's a, it's a very cool word. Um, yeah, and, and basically it's somewhere that's, that's not close. So an example using this word would be, um, I'm so tired of the city. I need some far off destination, for example, in the Sahara desert, for example, that is a, a, a way to use far off destination. Uh, let's move on in general. Actually, you can see here the word destination right here. We're actually gonna, we're gonna do this word right now. The word destination is used whenever you're talking about any kind of place where you are um, going, like for holidays. And uh, in this case, holiday destination means the place where you're going for holidays. So if I was to use it in a sentence, I would say, um, oh, basically also another thing is, this word is very often used by um, people that work in tourism. So for example, Tashkent is an amazing holiday destination because of... Um, because of its breathtaking views. Ah, uh, ah, uh, remember, remember, breathtaking view. Yeah. So good. Let's move on. Holiday brochure. You say this word as brochure. Brochure. Um, yeah. And this word is, the word brochure means like a little piece of paper where you have all the information in one place. And you, you're usually using this word to describe like some kind of in, in information piece of paper, like a piece of paper with information. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Next one is guided tour. Uh, so this is used whenever you're trying to ex talk about like a tour. So that means like some kind of trip that goes um, 
with someone else, usually a guide, like a person who is explaining where you, where you're going. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's Uzbek, but one of the like languages like that, I think it's called like a Sherpa. Sherpa is another word, especially like people that go to Mount Everest, the guides there, the, the, the traditional term, I think it's called Tibetan. i sorry. I think the language is Tibetan. They're called Sherpas. So it's a it, guide is kind of the same as Sherpa. Yeah. So a uh, guided tour is like a tour that you take with, um, with a guide, basically simple, simple, easy. Let's move on. This is a very cool phrase that I like to say a lot. And it's a, it's a very native speaker phrase to get away from it all. Uh, and this basically means whenever you are tired, you know, you're just, you're just dead and you want to move somewhere else. And specifically you want to move from everything, from all of your stress, from all of your work, from everything at once. So you say to get away from it all. Uh, and a couple of days ago, as I said, I was traveling and you know, I, I had to get away from it all. That's, that's my example sentence. Let me say that again. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was tired. I had to get away from it all. So I went to the mountains in Uzbekistan. By the way, I will be posting, I think, some pictures in this chat because, oh my God, I love the Uzbek mountains. They're so beautiful. They are just, they're amazing. Yeah. Sorry. That's a bit off topic. Uh, let's move on. Holiday of a lifetime. In general, actually, I will tell you of a lifetime is a great kind of phrase that you can use in a lot of different situations. It basically means something that will only happen once. Something that is so amazing that it's only here. Uh, it's only here for one time or, for example, like the best of its kind. So, for example, holiday of a lifetime is like the best holiday that you're ever going to have. Um, you can say lesson of a lifetime. Uh, usually, this is like some kind of one time situation. So, you cannot say like person of a lifetime. You cannot say profession of a lifetime. Uh, it's like one kind of situation. So yeah. Um, yeah. Last week I went on a holiday of a lifetime. Next one, holiday resort. Uh, resort means the, the word resort by itself. Um, it, it's like plan B basically. P re resort means plan B. Um, and it's a verb. So you, you use it to say something like, I resorted to eating cheese because there was no other food in my refrigerator. It's like your plan B. And holiday resort is like a place where you go to go far away. It's also kind of like your plan B. Those words are kind of connected. Uh, but in general, as a noun, holiday resort is a place where lots of people go for holiday. So yeah, you can, you can use this to describe like, for example, some kind of hotel or something like that. Next is the word hordes. Uh, and this word has different spelling, uh, spellings. I think this word is, this spelling is British. I'm not sure. Uh, but hordes of tourists is a synonym for crowds of tourists, like a lot of people. And you can use this to describe more than just people. You can say like hordes of zombies, for example, or hordes of people or hordes of students, something like that. Uh, yeah. So hordes of is also very popular and good to use by itself. Next is long weekend. Uh, I'm not sure how often we use this, but it's 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 pretty pretty fun. I mean, it's it's a nice kind of collocation kind of phrase to say. Uh, it's like when you have a weekend from Friday until Monday, so it's like four days. So yeah, um, I guess I guess you could say like um, in Uzbekistan, Independence Day is when we have a long weekend because you guys have like a kind of like something like that during the. Um, Independence Day holidays when you have those those holidays. So that's called the long weekend. Let's move on. Out of season. Out of season is, uh, it can be used for a lot of things. It can be used for vegetables. It can be used for clothes. It can be used for anything. Um, but it basically means when something is not popular or something is not in the ideal time. Uh, so in terms of holidays, you would use it if you wanted to say something like, um... I don't want to go to France. France is out of season. Like, uh, no, we should go to France another time of the year, for example. Um, yeah, you could also use it to talk about something like, I don't know, clothes. So those jeans are out of season. You should get new ones. That's, uh, that's an example. Next is this word. A lot of students mispronounce it. So let me tell, tell you how to say it correctly. Picturesque. <clears throat> Picturesque. We're going to be doing some more pronunciation after, after a, a moment. But picturesque means like very beautiful. Uh, you like looking at it and it looks like a picture. It looks like a painting, like someone drew it with paint instead of just looking at it. That's how beautiful it is. So that's what the word picturesque means. Uh, and let's do two more places of interest. Uh, these are basically places that you want to go. These are kind of like sites that you want to see. 
So places of interest is like places that you should go to. And the last one is self-catering. In general, the word catering is used whenever you're talking about um, talking about some kind of company or some kind of service that cooks food for tourists or for some kind of like company, for example. So if you have like a very big party and you need a lot of food for that party, you need to get catering for the party because catering is going to make all that food. So that's what the word catering means. And self-catering holiday means like a holiday where you cook your own food. Uh, you, you take all of your own food and, and you know, if, if you die of hunger, you die of hunger. It is what it is. So that is it for the vocabulary like explanations. Now let's, um, let's get a bit into the pronunciation. So let's get to it. Uh, sorry. Uh, my voice does sound a little bit dead, but it should be okay. I guess we'll, we're fine. So, oh, okay. First one. Uh, so get ready as always, listen to me, say it, and then repeat after me. We're going to say it two times, each word, two times. Um, yeah, let's go with this one first. Package holiday. Package holiday. Breathtaking view. Breathtaking view. Check-in desk. Check-in desk. Departure lounge. Departure lounge. Far off destination. Far off destination. To get away from it all. To get away from it all. Guided tour. Guided tour. Holiday brochure. Holiday brochure. Holiday destination. Holiday destination. Holiday of a lifetime. Holiday of a lifetime. Holiday resort. Holiday resort. Hordes of tourists. Hordes of tourists. Long weekend. Long weekend. Out of season. Out of season. Picturesque village. Picturesque village. Places of interest. Places of interest. Self catering. Self catering. All right, cool. So that's it for the vocab part. Uh, I recommend you guys to go back and listen to the pronunciation again after the lesson is done and kind of go through that one more time. Uh, yeah, it's good to practice the words you speak and the words that you're trying to learn using the correct pronunciation as well as using sentences. That helps a lot. I will say that right away. Uh, so yeah, that is why we included that homework, by the way. Let's get to the grammar part of today. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, the techniques and the structures and the way that you're supposed to answer speaking part two. Mainly, we're going to be focusing on how you should actually answer speaking part two, basically, and what is what is the best way to um, answer well. Yeah. So uh, the first thing is, here are like three main tips. Uh, here it is. Actually, here are the four main tips. The five main tips, I guess we'll, we'll keep it like this. Let me go over this. Let me tell you this information is just a block of information. So today we're doing techniques. There's not going to be a lot of grammar. We're mainly going to be talking about how to actually speak so that you get the best mark possible. Uh, yeah. Number one, use the correct tenses and vocabulary. Mainly what I mean by this tip is you need to think about what words am I going to say before your speech begins? Think about what is the topic? Have I learned this topic before? What kind of vocabulary do I know inside of this topic? These are very helpful questions to ask yourself. And think about the tenses. Think about like, is this a past event? Maybe am I going to be using past tense? Is this something I want in the future? Is this some kind of maybe something right now? Like describe a problem that you think something, something. So think about what tenses am I going to be using? Uh, next is talk about what you're comfortable with. You don't have to cover everything on the card. Uh, this is a very important tip. There is no task achievement for speaking task two. And in general, for speaking, there is no task achievement. They do not measure which questions you answer and which questions you don't answer. So all you need to do is you need to speak as best as you can. 
there are some caveats to this, some little information, and uh, we will be talking about this later, I think. But mainly, remember, there's no task achievement. Uh, you can speak for two minutes. Sorry, you can speak for around two minutes, uh, but it's better to stop at one minute and 30. This is my recommendation. One minute 30 is the best time because if you speak a bit too much, that's great. If you speak a little, a bit too little, that's also fine. If you speak for one minute, then if you finish a little bit early, that's like 50 seconds, not good, not enough. Um, so around one minute, 30 seconds is like the ideal. You should practice in front of a mirror. We're going to be giving you some specific feedback today. Um, and the, the examiner will usually ask you some question after your speech. In any case, after you speak for two minutes, you will be stopped. So keep that in mind. Try to speak as much as you can and answer everything you should. It's best not to let the examiner stop you. And we will be talking about this later. But basically, the best tip is speak for one minute, 30 seconds. This is the best advice that I can give you. Uh, at the beginning, you're going to have one minute, as we all know. And you are going to look at the task card, so like the question, and the things that you wrote down during the whole talk. So you can use both of those to your advantage. And that's what you actually should do. Uh, you're going to get uh, a, a, pe a piece of paper and a pencil to take notes, as always. Uh, whenever you're practicing, keep that with you. This is one of the most important parts of IELTS speaking part two. I would say it's the most important part. This is the most important minute of the speaking test because this is what basically uh, like decides your whole mark for speaking part two. So yeah. Um, here right now, we're going to be talking about how to use your one minute preparation time. Uh, okay. I just looked, there's 155 people. Perfect. Actually, if we look at the poll, um, one second, one second, 167. Okay. So there should be around like, I think 10 more people. Well, that's fine. Whatever. It is what it is. Okay. Um, Yes, so let's talk about it, and then we're going to do a bit of an activity, a bit of a game. I'm going to be testing you guys, and you're going to see how it goes. Uh, not not the feedback session yet, but we're just going to be practicing a little bit. Uh, yeah, let me drink a little bit. Is there water? Okay. So, um, yes. Let's get to it. Let me make it a little bit closer. Uh, yes. So you have one minute of time for preparation. You have one minute to think about all of your ideas and you have to brainstorm. And, uh, it's a very important moment and it's very fast. I promise you one minute is a very, very short amount of time. You probably know this already, but yes, uh, especially during the IELTS, you're going to be very stressed and time usually flies by faster whenever you're like focused. So yeah. Um, number one, get your idea quickly. Right here, it says 10 to 15 seconds, but I think that's too much. You should have three seconds to decide your idea, and then you have to start writing right away. 15 seconds is too much. You have to read the question as quickly as you can, very quickly. Read the first question, and then start writing. You need to learn how to write and read at the same time. It's not that difficult. You take your task sheet. The first question is, for example, like, describe a book you have recently read. What you do is you take your paper, and you start writing the name of the book with your hand without looking while you are reading the next question. And that is a very important tip. By doing this, you save yourself like a precious magical 10 seconds, which you can use to write down three academic words that you're going to use during your speech. That's already a very big boost for electrical resources. So I hope you understand 10 seconds during the IELTS speaking part two is a very important 10 seconds. Uh, you have to brainstorm not a lot of ideas necessarily, but you have to brainstorm your structure. That's the main thing. Um, as I said before, uh, you don't have to answer every question, but personally, I recommend it. Personally, for me, I always answer almost every single question as long as I know answers to them. If I don't know the answer, there's no reason to really try to force yourself to think about an answer and to like lie. If you can think of something else, that's also okay. Write that down. It's just about like taking the easiest path possible. That's the main thing. The easiest thing you can do and as much as you can write down, that's how much you should write down. Remember, your... Um, uh, your handwriting is not important. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you write it. As long as you can read it, that's perfect. Do not write words like I, you, he, me, the, a, all of that. Get that out of here. I don't want to see that. Only keywords. Only keywords. You need to write as much as you can. You have one minute to write down and then two minutes to speak. As many words as you can will help you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's get to it. Let's start by practicing the brainstorming thing, and then we're going to talk about how to practice the 45 seconds on the structure. Uh, we are going to do this. I do this with my students most of the time. It's a pretty fun activity. 
Uh, I'm going to give you guys a topic, and within three seconds, you have to think about your answer. Okay. Uh, so, 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 so. So. Okay, here it is. Sorry, uh, I was looking for the thing. Uh, here is the topic that I'm going to give you. Uh, you don't need any paper yet. You're going to need paper later, so get some paper out already. Get some paper. Uh, here it is. I'm going to give you the topic, and what I want you to do is I want you to just think about your answer. You can say it out loud if you want, but I'm not going to be testing you. Um, yeah. So here is your topic, and uh, you just need to say what the answer is in three seconds. I will be counting three seconds, and then I'll be doing the next topic. Describe a book you have read. Three, two, one. Mine is The Alchemist. It's a very good book by Paulo Coelho. I really recommend it. You could talk about some other books that you know. Not necessarily a book that you read, but it's, it's, it's a good idea to read books. Next one. Describe a film or movie actor from your country who is very popular. Three, two, one. Johnny Depp. Whatever. Any, any person. doesn't really matter who. Uh, it doesn't even have to be from your country. You can just lie. Whatever. Next one. Describe an occasion when someone visited your home. Three, two, one. Uh, just recently, I had a photo shoot uh, for profile pictures for this account, actually. And um, yeah, that was someone visiting my house, and it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I could just talk about that. It's, it's a photo shoot. So yeah. Yes. Next one. Describe an event that you attended recently. Three, two, one. One, uh, I don't have an answer, but I can just lie. Um, brainstorming session with um, basically one of my friends told me about like an all girls group meeting uh, with different kinds of business things. And I'm just going to adapt that to say that it's for every gender because I'm not a woman. Uh, so yeah, just like you can, you can usually lie, but the best thing to do is to adapt. So if you have some kind of situation that is true, Take that and kind of change it a little bit. In general, I don't recommend lying. It's it's difficult. It's hard. It really is. If at at your level, it's easier just to tell the truth. Um, yeah. Next one. Do, 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 do. Describe a place where you can learn. Three, two, one. Uh, this is the last one. My answer is public parks. In general, I really like going to public parks. Uh, you know, maybe like for example. Uh, Echo Park is a really cool place, and you can just sit down there in nature, not during like evening times because there's a lot of children. Children are the opposite of learning; they are death, um, unfortunately, very difficult to learn when they're around. So yeah, but anyway, yeah, good. Now what we're going to be doing is this: I'm going to be giving you a topic the same way as now, but you are going to be planning your ideas. So I'm going to give you one minute, and I want you to write down as many ideas as you can. We're going to do this a couple times, I think. I think, I think we're going to be doing this like maybe, I don't know, three times. We're going to do this three times. And what I want you to do is write down, apologies, write down as many keywords as you can. Okay. That's the main thing. That's the key. Uh, you need to write down keywords. Do not write down the words I, me, he, she, all that. That doesn't matter. Not important at all. Only keywords. And um, yeah, perfect. So here we go. I'm going to send the, send the thing and you're going to have one minute. So yeah. Okay. Wait. Get some paper and a pencil. If you do not have it right now, get it, get it, get it. Do, do, do. <sighs> okay. So here's my timer. My timer is ready. Um, okay, here's your question. And then as soon as I send it, I'm going to start the timer. Um, I Give me actually one second. Okay, perfect. So I was just checking. Uh, so you guys can see the questions in the group. I'm going to send this question into the group and I want you to write down 
in the speaking course group, not not the um, not the IELTS with Alex, but the speaking course group. So here is the um, question. I would like you to describe a successful small business that you know. Think about as many ideas as you can and write them down. Only the keywords. One minute is starting. So one minute, you may begin. All right, so your one minute is finished. Please stop writing. Stop stop writing immediately. Uh, count how many words you have. The best, like the, the the very like the more words you have, of course, the better. On average, thirty words is very good. Less than twenty words, not very good. Less than ten words, work on it. You need to work on it a lot. Uh, let's get to the next topic. We are not going to be speaking yet. Um, do not throw away these papers. So these topics that you have right now, keep them with you. Okay. Uh, do not throw them out. We're going to need them for the feedback section. Uh, you, you'll find out why <laughs> you'll find out why, uh, just keep them. Let's get to the next topic. Uh, here, here is the next topic. Uh, for the next topic, you need to know the word influence. Influence means some person who is important in your life. For example, somebody who gave you very good advice. Or somebody who controls your life, I guess you could say. Somebody who is important for you. So here's the topic. I would like you to describe... Oh, one second. Here's your topic and you have one minute. Make sure to write this down in another place. I would like you to describe a person who has been an important influence in your life. So you have one minute. You may begin. All righty, guys. So your time is finished. Please stop writing once again. Uh, hopefully you wrote down some words. Once again, count how many words you wrote down and write down the number next to your little thing, next to the place, and move on to the next place in your notebook or your paper or whatever. We're going to move. No, no, no. We're going to be moving on to the next topic. Remember, three seconds. You need to think of the topic as quickly as you can. It doesn't matter what the topic is. Just think about it. Just bang, 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 as quickly as you can, and then you have time to structure and try to answer all the questions. If you don't know how to answer one of the questions, that's fine. You don't have to answer every single question. Just try to answer the questions that are comfortable for you. So let's move on. Uh, here is the last thingy thingy. I would like you to describe a time that you were really busy. You have one minute. You may begin.
All right. So your time is finished. Uh, I hope you guys did write down some ideas. You did think about that. Uh, now what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be answering one of these myself. And I'm going to be using the vocabulary that we talked about. And I'm going to be using the same techniques in terms of preparation. And I will show you exactly how many words did I write down? How much did I think about it? Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to be seeing how a band nine speaker implements and uses the same techniques that I told you about. Okay. I'm not just teaching you for the sake of teaching you. I'm teaching you because these are techniques that work. So let's get to it. Sorry. Uncomfortable. Uh, let's get to it. I'm going to be sending the topic into the group once again. While I am preparing, you should also be preparing so you don't just waste your time for free. Uh, here is the topic. Give me a moment. Okay, here it is. Ah. Okay. Uh, here is the question, and as soon as I say go, we are all going to have one minute, and you should be preparing, and then after that, I will be speaking, and you guys should listen, and if you guys remember what you're supposed to do, while you are listening to me, you should try to write down the ideas that I use in my speech, and also the um, the ideas in the vocabulary. So, let's get to it. Um, here is the file. I would like you to describe a beautiful place you once visited. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you have one minute, you may begin. Let's all get to it. Okay, so our one minute is up. I'm going to begin speaking, and hopefully you guys are going to be listening. So let's get to it. Uh, one second. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, I'm going to pull this up real quick. So these are the words that I'm going to be using. Uh, yeah. Okay. I would like to tell you guys about a holiday that I had um, uh, and specifically about a location that I saw, a beautiful place. Um, and this place is Venice. Venice is one of the most beautiful cities and one of the most picturesque places that I have ever known and that I think anybody has ever, uh, anyone has ever imagined and anyone has ever talked about. It's, it's just, it's, it's one of those cities that you have to see to believe. Um, we went there around six years ago before the massive damaging floods um, that um, influenced the flow of tourism in the city. Uh, there was a very big influx of tourists before these floods, and then after the floods, it was very difficult to buy tickets. So thankfully, um, before all of this happened, we were able to see the place. Uh, now there are hordes of tourists because actually these floods and the damage that had been caused by them it was repaired, so once again, there's a lot of tourists there. Um, and in general, we went on a family trip. Uh, it was a package holiday, as well as a guided tour. We had a very interesting tour guide who told us a lot about the history and the uh, very interesting uh, background information about Venice. And we went sightseeing quite a lot. We saw all of the most important places of interest. Um, thankfully we did not go when it was out of season, uh, because Italy has very short windows when you can go see all of the most important locations there. Um, Venice is the most important, I think, in my opinion, the most important holiday destination in Italy because it is, uh, so unique. 
And it's unique not just from all of the other countries in the world, but it's unique from all the other places in Italy as well. Uh, if you've never been to Venice, it is a city where there are a lot of bridges because there's a lot of canals. Every single part of the city, instead of streets, normal streets, they have just a lot of little canals with, with, um, with ships there. So Venice is the most beautiful place that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, time is finished. Uh, yeah. So, 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 so. Uh, okay, my time is finished. Perfect. So uh, that was my sample uh, speech for part uh, part two. Um, I will say right now it is it, it is a bit late. I've been I've been up planning the course all day, so I'm a bit tired. I will I will be honest. I did repeat myself a little bit. I, you know, I don't like lying. I was I was I was a bit tired. Overall, I think it would still get a bad nine because I did use like lexical resource and all all of the parts that I should have used. Um, but, but in general, try not to be tired. This is, this is, you know, I'm giving you advice from real life. Don't be tired when you're taking your test. Uh, you know, get enough sleep. I did not get enough sleep today at all. I'm dead. Anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, we are now going to be, uh, giving feedback to you guys. Uh, today I think we're going to be doing, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing three questions. So three people are going to get feedback today. There will be more later. It's just uh, for today. I, I'm quite a bit tired, and part two is a bit longer. So yeah, uh, for today, for today, we have some people that we have chosen to get feedback. Uh, let me find that in a moment. Boop, boop. One sec. Hey, can you give me my charger? Do you need it? Yeah, tipsy. Plug it in here, please. Right. There. Thank you. Instead of the other charger. Okay. Um, we have chosen. We have chosen. We have chosen. Okay, let's start with this. Shohruh uh, Karimov. Thank you so much. Shohruh Karimov. I'm going to find you. Wait. Shohruh uh, Karimov, please raise your hand so I can see you. If you are here. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, Shohruh Karimov. What's up? There we go. My man. My man. My man. What's up? So, uh, please say hi so I can hear you. Hi. Why, uh, Yo, um, I'm doing great. Quite a bit tired, but everything's all right. Tell me, are you taking the test soon? Yeah, yeah. That's cool, cool. Much. Okay. So, I'm going to be giving you feedback then. I'm going to be seeing how you're doing. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. I'm going to send your question. Actually, sorry, no, no. We already planned. So, did you write down your ideas for the three part twos in the chat? Uh, I'll be honest, not for all of them. Just... Really? Did you do the first one? No, no, it's a little bit harder for me. Did you do the second one? Really? The se okay. So the, the question about the question about um, describe a person. This one you did, right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Is it okay if that is your topic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna give you around twenty seconds to remember what you wrote down, and then uh, you are going to be speaking. Is that okay? Are you ready? Ten seconds, perfect. Okay, ten seconds has begun. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna get to it. For some reason, my my screen is doing strange things. Why? Okay, your ten seconds is finished, so you may begin speaking. You have two minutes. You may begin. I would like to talk about a person that has a great influence on my life. And this person is my dad. I have to say, does I have to admit that my dad did not study very well. And uh, so when I when I was studying at school, does my dad gave me some uh, more useful piece of advice? to study very well in order to not to like him in uh, my future life. So, uh, 
uh, that time I, I took my dad's advice and, and I have been taking an advantage from that. I did, and till now I, uh, I started good at a grade and I did enter university with a scholarship and now everything is okay. I think, yeah, just the advice that my dad gave me uh, just is one of the most, let's say, greatest part of my life. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. That's it? Well, sorry, okay. I am I am a little bit uh, nervous for being first one here. Yeah. Yeah, you are actually the first one. I'm gonna give you a round of applause. That's awesome. Thank you. That was that. That, that is the first person. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for being the first one. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't your choice, but you did do a great job, actually. Uh, let me tell you a bit on how you can improve. Oh, sorry. Let me finish. How you can improve? First of all, great job with the timing. You were about one minute twenty seconds. You didn't talk too much. You didn't start repeating the same ideas. Uh, you kind of like once you finished saying what you were saying, you just stopped, which is good. That is the way it should be. Um, you have quite good storytelling, especially closer to the beginning. Uh, I'm going to actually turn off my uh, screen share one second. Uh, okay. So uh, in general, you have very good storytelling. Like I, the way you were telling it, it was kind of like you were, I don't know, like I was hearing like a, the story of a movie or something. So it was great. Um, but you have a couple grammar mistakes here and there. So, um, I not to like him to, to not to like him. You would have to say to not, to not be like him. Um, and also taking an advantage. That's also a little bit wrong. Uh, but you did use a very good like technique, especially at the beginning. You said, I have to say, I have to admit. So you kind of like repeated, uh, and that's fine. That's actually great. Like repeating the same words in a different way is a great technique. In general, I'd say you, you did a great job. Um, work a bit on your fluency. I feel like especially like this time you were stressed. You know, it's, you're the first person, so I'm going to give you a discount on that. Um, in in the in the personal feedback, since you are the first person, you can record another another speaking, and then I'll give you some more feedback in terms of that. But yeah, thank you so much, Shahrukh. Uh, work on lexical resource, and also work on not being so scared. <laughs> good advice. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, so let's move on to the next person. Do de, do do de, do da da. Next person. All right. Uh, this is an interesting name, Gulasal. Gulasal, please raise your hand, Gulasal, so that I can I can choose you for today. Gulasal, if you can hear me, raise your hand, Gulasal. <laughs> okay, I think you cannot hear me. That makes sense. Okay, we, I will I will find you. I know where you live. I will find you. Uh, next question is, Husnuddin Yusupov. Sir, raise your hand. Mr. Husnuddin Yusupov, please raise your hand so that yeah, I can see you. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, immediately. Perfect. Are you listening? Say hi, please. Husnuddin Yusupov. Please say hi. Uh, you're muted. Yes, now I can hear you. Are you in a car? Are you in a car? I'm on the way going home. I, I actually forgot that we have lesson today. <laughs> Come on, that's like the first reminder. rule. <laughs> yeah, I, I, okay, I need fine. to put a reminder for next time. Can you please okay. uh, ask me tomorrow or yes. something else? Okay. For the for the first time, I'll serious. give you an exception. Just make, yeah, make sure to be careful. Everybody, remember, lessons start today. Do not be late. Do not be on the way. Please, I beg you. Anyway, okay. Uh, is it okay if you speak today? Is that fine? Is that fine? Uh, I actually missed everything you explained it. <laughs> I just joined. Hi, Husnidin. Okay, for next lesson. Okay, you're going to be next lesson. You better get ready. Okay, do not. I'm watching you. Okay, that's it. Yeah, Thank okay. you. See you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, next person is um, Umida. Umida, hello, Umida. Please raise your hand. Um, I don't know which Umida, unfortunately, because there's actually a lot of Umidas in this world. 
uh, just the Umida whose name is just Umida. Okay, if your Telegram name is like Umida Umida Gulchapchap, do not raise your hand. Okay, I guess no Umida. I don't know. Okay, next person. Let's move on. Muhammad John. Big letters. Big letters. Muhammad John. Please raise your hand. Big letters. Muhammad John. Muhammad John. Big letters. As I said once again, from next lesson, I will be informing which of you is going to have your feedback during which day. So you are going to be prepared more than today. Um, yeah. Okay. No Muhammad John. Muhammad John. Johnny. J O H N Y. Johnny. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Hi, Mr. Johnny. All right, I'm unmuting you. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Please say hi. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? Doing great. Happy to see you. Happy to hear you. Are you by any chance the guy with the with the with the voice? Um, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you are. All right, good, great, perfect. Happy to hear from you. Uh, your voice is exactly what I needed today. Uh, did you prepare? <laughs> did, did you prepare any of the questions? <laughs> I, I took took down some notes. Um, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so uh, would you be? What do you want to answer? Describe a time you were really busy, or describe a small business that you know. Um, actually, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really prepared for both, but um, yeah. Okay, so um, everyone, this is just like a general announcement. Whenever I say spend one minute to prepare, I'm not saying it for comedy. I'm not saying it as a joke. Uh, this is not to you, Johnny. This is just like as a whole. Uh, we are going to be using this, and in general. Practicing the one minute of preparation is just as important as practicing the two minutes of speaking. So please keep that in mind. If I say something, please do it. P please do it. You paid 300000 for this course. Please do it. Thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Johnny. Um, okay. I would like you to describe a successful small business that you know. And since you didn't prepare, I will give you, sure, 30 seconds. Uh, you, can, you can write down some ideas. 30 seconds. Is that okay? Um. Actually, I got I got some notes here, but not not yeah. really in a full uh, thing. So yeah. Okay, sure, sure, that's fine. Okay, no no worries. Uh, so you you can do that. Um, yeah, here. Let me start the timer. Then two minutes. You may begin whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so um, back in school, um, like three years ago, I had a really uh, smart teacher who used to teach economics and but you know one time i talked with him and he was complaining about i was complaining about his job and then he was saying i want to start a business and actually after like two years i i saw him again and he he told me that he had already started uh his own business and he wanted to take me to his business uh you know to his uh office and when I got there, I noticed that he had grown a lot of, uh, you know, a really good business there in our village. Actually, it's really good. It's 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 not that big, but it's it's a bakery, uh, and it uh, you know especially like just uh, cake for special occasions. Uh, and I was I was pretty uh, impressed like uh, by my teacher, and especially when he showed me the statistics uh, of his product scattering all around the country. Um, yeah, and I think uh, he did very go good job uh, improving the business guy. Okay. That's it. Awesome. Okay. Um, so let's get to it. Do you remember kind of what feedback I gave you last time? Maybe that would be helpful. Um, yeah, um, my grammar mistakes, especially with uh, articles. Um, okay. And I know I have a really big uh, like problem with tenses as well. Mm. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. Um, so l let me tell you some like differences. Uh, again, I'm not sure whether this is just because of today or because you actually improved. Uh, I did not notice any article mistakes today. I didn't write any of those down. In general, you didn't like. I don't think you made a single one, as far as I know. Um, you actually used two tenses in a very interesting way, in a very natural way. You said, um, 
uh, he was com- complaining, I think. Wait one sec. Or so- something along the lines of like, he complained something, something he was saying. Or like, he was complaining, he was saying something like that. I can't remember exactly, yeah. but uh, whenever you were saying about- those two tenses, say it again. Um, he was complaining about his job uh, at school was getting paid, uh, you know, really low. So. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is the way you said it then, you used the tenses in a very interesting, in a very interesting way. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't really tell. There is a chance that in general you use, you make some mistakes with tenses because that could technically be a mistake. Um, if I was to say how you can improve again, academic vocab. I don't think I heard anything that was necessarily topic related. Uh, I heard, you know, I heard, I noticed those were good vocabulary words. Everything else was generally mediocre. Like it was just like in the middle, like it was good words, of course, good, good words, but nothing extraordinary. I think that's, that's how you could take your speech to the next level in general. What? Did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I wrote down some words, but I, I didn't really look at my notes when I was talking. Um, like um, a small range service, is, that like, is, is it a word? Small range service? Small range? Yeah, a, a service and a small range. Is it, uh... You can say a small range of services. That means like a small amount of different services. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, so let me just kind of monologue for a little bit. This is the importance of planning your speech. I, I mean, I've said this before. Uh, you wrote down some words, and if you use them, you, your speech would get a lot higher marks. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Do, do, you, do you kind of understand what I mean? Yeah, got it. So, how yeah. would you rate? Um, how would you rate this? Uh, I know this um, story thing. I made it up. <laughs> Really? Well, in that case, that's actually even better. If you lied, then that's very good. Like for a lie, that's very good. If for a real story, it would be very mediocre, but for a lie, that's good in terms of like how much you actually used. Uh, I would say that this is about seven, seven, seven point five seven, something like that. Um, maybe it could be eight, maybe potentially, but there's not enough vocabulary. I don't, I don't hear the vocab. I don't hear like the phrases that native speakers use a lot. I don't hear any of that, like pizzazz, that amazing stuff that, you know, gets you the eight. Um, there's a lot of fluency, a lot of coherence and cohesion. I, I hear the way you speak is nice. The pronunciation is great. Love the voice. But overall, I think it's seven, 7.5. Something like that. Yeah. Thanks. I do hope to improve, uh, improve my vocabulary with this section because I see that you're doing a lot of job with it, especially with this section. So, um, absolutely do it. Listen, do it, prepare your speech and write down the words that you're going to use. You have no idea how far that gets you. Even if you use like two or three words, that's a lot. You don't have to like say words every single sentence. Like I do. That's like what a native speaker does. You just have to use some of them. And if you plan your speech, you're going to put in so many words. It's going to be amazing. Just trust me, follow the techniques. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Johnny. Uh, any other questions? Um, that's basically, yeah, that's basically it. But I, you know, um, yeah, uh, actually I struggle with vocabulary, but I do know that, uh, I'm actually going to be better off with this course. So absolutely. Yeah. We're going to be going over a lot of it. Remember to do all the homework or else bad things are going to happen. Thank you so much, Johnny. All right. So, uh, let me actually, I just remembered, I need to explain to you guys, uh, what I wrote down. Um, I forgot. I'm going to post it into the channel right now. These are the ideas that I uh, used while I was speaking. Let's do the last person for today who's going to be speaking. And then after that, I'm going to explain my ideas and then I will give you the homework. Um, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Gulasal, I saw you were online. You Please raise your hand again if you want to speak. Sorry, not if you want to speak. Raise your hand. You don't have a choice. <laughs> raise your hand right now. I'm going to find you. Do it. Do it, Gulasal. Do it. Do it. Do it. Where are you? I saw you raise your hand. I see you. I see you. Haha, <laughs> Gula Sel. Hello. Hi. Please say hi. Hello. What's up? So happy to see you. Uh, did you plan your speech for the last questions? For, for the last question? For the last question? Yes, of course. 
Perfect. Thank you so much for following instructions. That's the, the best type of student. So I'm going to give you 20 seconds to refresh your memory, and then you're going to have two minutes to speak. Okay. I'll take that as a yes. You may begin. Can I start? I'm not hearing your voice. Hello? Well, I heard I heard your voice finally. Okay. You you have two minutes, you, you may begin. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, typical for me to be busy on a daily basis. Sometimes I end up uh, studying on uh, even weekends, which is uh, not very useful for my health. And uh, to be honest, I always try to strike a balance between my studies and my life. And today I'd like to describe one moment. I was uh, really busy at the time and uh, I think I have experienced this uh, situation uh, once in my life and uh, it was actually uh, the wedding of my sisters and uh, it was last year in the middle of October actually I didn't go to my course and uh, decided the whole days uh, helping my uh, relatives to uh, into the wedding wedding and uh, I went there at night so that I wouldn't spend so much time in the morning uh, traveling to my sister's home. I got up early in the morning, probably at five or six. First, I helped organizing the table for guests. And uh, after that, I helped with uh, disturbing the food. And uh, then when the guests left, I helped to do the I helped to do worse dishes and uh, in the afternoon I had uh, a little bit time to have some rest. I probably slept for like an hour or two. Uh, after that we expected another way of guests so there were lots of things to do for me, washing the dishes and serving the food and uh, in the evening we went to the wedding venue. They had to deal with many <laughs> things such as making sure that tables were set and everyone it. And the wedding ended at midnight. I was more than tired, a little exhausted at time. At the same time, so yeah, I went home and got some well-deserved shot eye. And the next morning, I just went to my studies. But this was a time when I uh, really busy with uh, helping my sister's wedding. Okay, please stop. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I can hear you. Um, uh, yeah, thank you for muting yourself. Okay, so basically, um, pretty good. Honestly, I I have kind of mixed opinions. You have problems with pronunciation. Your biggest problem is pronunciation and intonation. The way you're speaking, all of your words kind of mix together in one. I think you need to take a breather and speak a little slower. Try to speak with a more natural flowing cadence. Kind of like I'm speaking right now slower, take pauses between each sentence, and then you're going to get a higher score because every time you have like a full stop, like you have a sentence and then the next sentence, the words at the end and at the beginning of the sentences, they mix together into one and it sounds weird. It, it's not the way it's supposed to work. Like Spanish, you speak like this and you just continue speaking. 
But English does not work that way. You need to speak, stop, speak, stop. And it needs to be very clear. So try to enunciate more, speak more clearly and try to open your mouth more using like more sounds. Um, great vocabulary, honestly. Uh, try to strike a balance. Um, well-deserved shut eye. Uh, do, 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 do. And uh, you had a very good lead in. So like before you gave the answer to the question, you kind of gave like an introduction, which was awesome. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Perfect. Uh, but one little problem that I do have to mention is again, the pronunciation, three or four main words, relatives, guests, once, typical, mistakes. You cannot say them like this, like you said, uh, guess this several times. That's incorrect. 100%. Do not say that like that. Um, yeah. So pronunciation is your weakest point. Your grammar is good in, ter- sorry, not your grammar. Your vocabulary is good in terms of the words that you're using, like informal words. You need to work a little bit on your academic vocabulary because I did not hear a lot of that. Shut eye is a very good phrase, but it's not an academic phrase. Um, yeah. That's kind of that. Your grammar is pretty good. I mean, I I could use some work. Of course, everyone's grammar could use some work, but in general, no big problems there mainly. Yeah, pronunciation. Try to speak slower, enunciate, and you'll be golden. Yeah. So uh, I think that's about it for today's feedback. Thank you so much, Guasal. Um, Today we're going to be doing... uh, uh, Sorry. Today we're going to be doing three people. Usually we're going to do we get a little, little. Usually we're going to be doing about five, and we're going to be doing like one and, and parts one and part three. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for participating with me on the uh, third on on the first lesson. I'm going to be posting into the channel the ideas that I wrote down while I was preparing the speaking for parts. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so listen, listen, listen. Um, Once again, let's go over the most important rule or one of the most important rules. Before we do that, let me just uh, conclude. Thank you, Shazal. Yeah, basically, I'm going to be sending into the group the the words that I wrote down and all those ideas. Um, Here is the homework for today. Let me show you one moment. One moment. Okay. I'm going to be sharing the screen one second. Do dee do 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 dee do do. Oh, I can just send it into the group. Okay, I'm going to do that one second. I'm so tired. Okay, uh, here, I'm going to send it into the group in one second. Here's the homework. Let's go through this one by one. Uh, first is this right here. Um, why is this so difficult? Uh, share screen. And Wednesday word. Share screen. Okay, perfect. So here it is. Number one. Uh, watch the following videos. Here are five videos. I'm going to send this file into the group so that you can watch all of these videos. You should watch every single one of them and write a summary, at least two paragraphs for each of the videos. Some of them are about holidays. Some of them are about travel. All of these And you can see some of the vocabulary that we used in these videos. Learn all the vocabulary and write two sentences using each word. Write down a summary of the main topic of the lesson. You remember the structure and all of the main tips about speaking part two. Write down the main ideas and vocabulary that I used in my answer. Remember my speaking part two answer. And practice answering. uh, So record the speech the same way, except using my ideas and using my vocabulary. Uh, And then I have two topics that are kind of similar. One of them is about vacation. One of them is about um, basically, yeah, journey and vacation. I will send these into the group so that you can see them. Um, Yeah. Once again, let me repeat because this is very important. If you do not do all of the homework for the group, by the time that it is checked tomorrow, you will get an infraction. What that means is when you have four infractions, uh, you are going to be excluded from the group. You will be kicked out and yeah, yeah. If you have two infractions, I think I actually forgot to talk about that. I'm not very smart. Uh, let me go up to the top. Yeah, I see. So uh, the first infraction is a warning. So I, we're going to message you and we're going to say, hey, you made an infraction because of this, this, this. Uh, warning, basically. So you need to be more careful. The second one is uh, the, the second infraction means that you are not going to get the feedback session. So whichever, like if you would have had a feedback session, you're not going to get it. Uh, yeah, 
The third infraction, there will be a conversation with the administrator that could lead to exclusion. This means that we will message you, we will talk about why, what's happening, and if you do not have any respectable reasons, if you seem like you don't care, maybe you will be excluded. If you seem like you care, we will leave you alone. But the fourth infraction excludes you from the course. So if you make four infractions, if you break the rules four times, regardless of what the rules are, you are going to lose your place in this course. And as I said, here it says this, you'll be kicked, you will not receive the recorded videos, you will not receive your feedback, and you will not receive payment for the course. Do the homework. It's very important. Remember to follow the rest of the rules of the course. Please be on time. Please come to every lesson. It is really important. Uh, I try my best not to waste your time. We do everything as productive as possible. And I always make sure that if we're doing something like writing, like the, the, the ideas for part two, like you should do that as well. Don't waste your own time. You're here for one hour. Spend that hour as productively as possible. Thank you guys so much. Remember to do the homework. It will be checked tomorrow at seven. Have a great day. And thank you so much for the first session. It will be sent sometime today in the evening. Have a great day, guys. Uh, yeah. See y'all. Bye-bye. End of the first lesson. Woo, yeah. First lesson of the speaking course intensive. Woo. Bye.